Good afternoon. Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview. Leicester City versus Everton at the King Power. Tough ones, yeah. Big game this. Big game for both sides. Obviously, Everton have lost every Premier League game so far this season. Leicester haven't won one yet, but do have a couple of points. Probably should have won the last game at the weekend against Palace. But this is a tough game for the Toffees. Yeah, it certainly is. I don't think we expected to be in a position where we'd be heading into this game with zero points on the board. We knew it'd be a you know a big game and we might finish there or thereabouts around teams like Leicester, but I think we certainly expected to be going into this a little bit stronger. But here we are. It's a real September six points for both teams, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't expect to be finishing around Leicester, but there you go. Different different expectations no you but, know what i mean yeah though. we are where this was always going to be a game that everton would be looking to try and keep that distance from of course but leicester have had a better start than us and for everton from an everton perspective there's a massive amount of pressure on this game now and going out the carabao cup in midweek as well has obviously added to that pressure and the manager finds himself under pressure and rightly so and, and he, i think he would admit that anyway he would say that the expectations of our club isn't to lose every game it plays, and that's where we are right now. But I think going into this one, there is an opportunity for them to correct it this weekend. Like I said, they haven't won a game yet. They're, they're a little bit... I don't know, they're a little bit in between at the minute because obviously Steve Cooper's just gone in, hasn't he, as the manager, and I think it hasn't quite settled down for Leicester so far. They haven't spent a lot of money this summer reinforcing you know, their team since they come up. So it's it is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for both sides, if truth be told. They've got a they're playing a team that's got beat in every game it's played at home when you're looking for your first win. You can't ask for more than that right now. You know, conversely, we're going to a team that hasn't won a game either this season and we're looking to kick start our season. So both teams have got, you know, something really to go for this weekend. Yeah, and a big, big opportunity for Everton because it would give us a massive lift. It would alleviate some of the pressure on the manager because it would be points on the board. We'd mm. go above Leicester, we'd leapfrog them. We'd mm. probably get out of the bottom three as a whole, depending on mm. other results around the league, obviously. But it's a big opportunity for Everton. It's a big opportunity for the manager before it gets to the point of no return. Mm. For some people, that might have already been the case. Some people might have already made their minds up. For me, personally... This is the game where we simply have to win. If not, I don't know how the manager's position is attainable anymore. I really don't. I think you've just got to look at the form. You've got to look at the games where you've lost You've lost points in games that you really should be winning and coming away with something from. Whether that's because on paper you should be winning those games or in those games as we've seen against Villa and Bournemouth, we've had the leads and we've thrown them away. Yeah, I mean, again, it's this... That all the pressure's mounted for a bigger picture, hasn't it? It isn't simply just no, the start of, of the not. season. But there is pressure. We we spoke on different shows. Gary O'Neill apparently under a lot of pressure now. Wolves and they they don't know, you know, if he's gonna survive this weekend. They go to Villa this weekend. But if Villa were to beat Wolves and Everton could beat Leicester, then Everton would, as you said, climb out that bottom three and it it calms things down a little bit with Crystal Palace at home to come. The pitch it can change very quickly. A defeat for Everton at the weekend would be a disaster. It'd be five Premier League games in and we'd have lost all of them to a team that we're expecting to finish above or hoping to finish above would be an absolute disaster, I think. And that's the worry. But obviously, we the manager's done his press conference. There are a few injury worries or illness worries for this game. Uh, he's already confirmed that Jared Branthwaite isn't available. We knew that anyway. He's playing an under-21 game. This weekend, as is Nathan Patterson, so both of them aren't available. Um, doesn't look like well, it's just a Garner Gate definitely isn't available this weekend, so there's another one out. James Garner, at the time of recording, hasn't trained, and he's a huge doubt. Jack Harrison, there's the question mark over. Michael Keane is having a scan, there's a question mark over him. Seamus Coleman isn't back, so there is for this game anyway, quite a few players out. However, Mikhailenko, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, James Tarkovsky have all trained and they look like they're going to be available for the weekend. Yeah, again, it's difficult circumstances for the club and the manager because he's potentially without quite a few key players. Um, 
Branthwaite being back in contention is a good thing. We would have liked to have him for this game, obviously, but you do need to be careful of his injury recovery and you don't want to sort of re-aggregate that before he's back in the team properly and, you know, lose him for an even longer period. And it is difficult for the manager and I do sympathise with that, but I think as a whole, because there's not that much credit in the bank for him, he almost, I don't want to say he doesn't get that excuse because you have to look at it objectively, don't you? You have to go, well, he's been missing key players. He's missing key players for this game. That does, of course, make it harder. But because we've missed out on so many opportunities to get that success when we have had more players, when we haven't been missing as many, for me, he just doesn't get as much leeway there as he might do in better circumstances. And look, that might seem harsh. Maybe it is. But it's not that long of a season, really, is it? We're mm. already five games in. After the weekend, that's already a portion of your season gone. And if you've gone five games of the season, the opening five games, about any points on the board, then no excuse really seems to cut that, really. I don't think there's any real justification for that. There can be circumstances, mm -hmm. obviously. And if your manager's got a brilliant record going back with you where you can confidently say, no, he would definitely do better than that if he had more mm -hmm. players available. Maybe you do give him the benefit of the doubt, but because it has been hit and miss for so long, not just these first um, couple of games of the season, you struggle to see that for definite, don't you? You struggle to say for definite, no, we'd definitely be doing better with a couple more players. Well, the thing is, he hasn't had to be decimated with injuries before this game, and we've lost all of them. So, yeah, Tiara Frantwaite hasn't been available, and you always want your better players, but we bought a centre-back for 15 million quid in the summer, and he's not played them, so... That's on him, really. Um, the head-to-head -head going into this one. Let's have a look at the head-to-head -head in the Premier League between the two sides. They've met 34 times. There's been seven wins for Leicester, 11 for Everton, and there's been 16 draws. Uh, Everton have actually won more away from home against Leicester City than they have at Goodison in the Premier League. Uh, the last two times they met in the Premier League, uh, Leicester won 2 nil at Goodison Park. Frank Lampard was the manager. Tielemans with a cracker in that one, I remember. And uh, it ended the game at King Power ended 2 2. A night where Jordan Pickford made a huge save from a penalty from James Madison when Everton were getting beat 2 1 in the game and really kept Everton. That one really kept Everton in the Premier League. Alex Awobi equalised second half. Uh, Leicester went down and Everton stayed up. So it was a huge moment in that one. Um, Leicester, just mention them briefly there, last time out, 2-0 up at Palace, done the thing that you can't do, which was concede immediately after going 2-0 up, which, you know, Crystal Palace, Mateta, close range, got them back into it. And then it looked like they were seeing the game out, albeit they were under a lot of pressure. And then Palace get themselves a penalty. Connor Cody missed time tackle in the box and a penalty, which John Philippe Mateta rolled in for 2-2. And they'll be devastated with that because... They mightn't win many away games this season. So when you're 2-0 up, sorry, 2-1 up in injury time, you've really got to try and dig in and see that out, haven't you? Yeah, very disappointing for them. And they're probably carrying a lot of the same grievances as us. They've not mm. lost from 2-0 up, which is, you know, something they have over us. We have twice, but... <laughs> It's uh, obviously very disappointing for them, but we've got to look at the areas where Palace did hurt Leicester mm. in that game. We can look at how they managed to get in behind the fullbacks, used a bit of pace, and you know, winning the ball high up the pitch with their high press. Two things we as a football team don't really seem to do. So, you know, whether we see a bit of a tactical change, we try and hurt them in the areas we think they're weak, or we just try and do what we do, which is try and force set pieces and you know, play it long and hope Dom, if he's available and if he starts, obviously gets the better of the centre half and manages mm. to get through on goal. Well, this is how Leicester lined up last time out at Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Have a look at that now. Uh, Mad Samanson in goal, James Justin, Wow Face, uh, Akoli and Christensen, the back four, Jordan Ayew, Harry Winks, Oliver Skip, I thought they were the same person, um, Wilfred and Didi, who's been brilliant for them, Stefan... Mavdidi and Jamie Vardy playing up top. And Vardy has obviously been, as always, in very good form for Leicester because that's what he does. He's their talisman, isn't he? Let's have a look at Jamie Vardy's numbers so far for the season in the Premier League. Played four games, scored two goals. He's had three shots on target from an XG. Two goals from an XG of 1.44. 
he has created two chances, two big chances for Leicester City as well. There's his heat map there. And even though Wilfred and Didi's had an excellent start to the season and he has, Jamie Vardy is the man to watch, isn't he? He is the danger man. Yeah, he is. I don't know how he does it for a fella who seems to live on a diet of Red Bull and Skittles. He's still brilliant for his age. And even, what is he now, 37? And mm. he still loves that ball in behind, running Watch in it. behind the defenders. He did it against Palace, obviously. And, and Didi, I think, actually set him up for that goal, mm. didn't he? And he's been playing in the more advanced he role has, yeah. at times this season, which mm. isn't necessarily what people associated with his game, but maybe... You know, as his legs aren't maybe on quite what they used to be, he's starting to use ability on the ball a little bit more. And he's doing well. So fair play to Leicester. They're adapting. They're trying to get the most out of the players. And Jamie Vardy is someone that just seems to be evergreen, mm. isn't he? Like, no matter the age, he'll always perform that running behind and get on the end of it. He's clever as well. He's a very clever footballer and he's a natural finisher. So he's the one we've got to pay attention to. And we've seen against Villa, we struggled with that ball over the top and behind. He already Tielemans former Leicester punished us with that yeah. on a couple of occasions so we're going to have to be very switched on at the back we're going to have to monitor how much space we give them in behind while obviously not tucking in too far back as to allow them to gang up on us almost mm. so it, it's going to be difficult when you play a team that has that sort of ability and obviously Oliver Skip, Harry Winks enjoy the ball Winksy um, uh, they are good footballers they're good on the ball aren't they we'll have to make sure we yeah they're that, decent at the fundamentals aren't they but then when you are trying to sort of facilitate ndd pulling the strings a bit more and then you've got mavadidi who's a good player good mm. physical presence and that's the other thing with leicester they do have a couple of physical players in mm -hmm. their players with pace and a bit of strength as well which again something we're lacking not great is it uh, let's have a look how the trophies lined up last time out at villa park uh, so it was obviously picked within goal. The manager went with Ashley Young, James Tarkovsky, Michael Keane and Vitaly Michalenko uh, in midfield. Ira Boonham and Adrisha Garna Gay. Jack Harrison off the right, Dwight McNeil in the number 10 role and Illiman and Jai off the left. Dom through the middle. We already know that there'll be no Adrisha Garna Gay. It looks unlikely that Jack Harrison... Well, sorry, Jack Harrison is a late, will be a late decision. The manager sort of threw him in at the end of the press conference and said, oh, forgot, Jack's not either not well or has took a knock as well. Um, so he's doubtful. And obviously, the centre-back, he did say Tarkovsky's trained, so as long as he has no reaction, he'll be all right. But Michael Keane, who the manager goes to, this is one of his go-to defender after Branthwaite, isn't he? He's got a precautionary scan, which doesn't sound great. But that he said, I'm hopefully he'll be fit. Um, and obviously Jake O'Brien will be be there as cover. Do you expect? Do you expect Ashley Young to start? Because in obviously the Carabao Cup game in midweek, Roman Dixon, young right back, was played, and I thought he did well. I gave him man of the match in my thing because I thought on a night when no one really shone for Everton, I thought he did quite well. Albeit, you could see a couple of little. Na bit of naivety in his game, that's to be expected as a youngster. But I thought he did well. And I, I did say, I think when we done the final word, I would play him at Leicester simply because he's got that thing that this team has got, you know, very little of, and that is genuine pace. Yeah, the main sticking point for me is I think Ashley Young needs to come <clears> out of this team. I know the <throat> things with the booze wasn't because of Ashley Young. No, it, was, no. it was the substitution it was the, the itself. Of it, yeah. But I think even before that, I think fans were starting to question Ashley Young's importance to this team and why mm. are we relying on Ashley Young at this stage of his mm. career to be so important in so many positions. And I just think while he is a useful player to have around the squad, the best thing for this team is to start moving away from Ashley Young if mm. we can at least for the time being as well, because you don't want it to develop into a story. You don't want a situation where, if for whatever reason he has an incident in the game that he gets criticism for, it blows up into something and people in the media can turn it into a story and say, oh, they booed him when he came on and they're giving him stick now. You just don't want it to develop like that. It's not nice for the player and it's not nice for the club. Mm -hmm. You've got Roman Dixon, who, like you say, has a bit of pace to his game, which, again, is something we don't have a lot of in our squads. He's very raw for me, he's very raw, I think. He's not ready. 
But at the same time, it's where we are. I don't think he's a liability in the team by any means. No. I just think he shows his rawness at times. <clears> like <throat> for the free kick he gave away at the weekend against Southampton. Not at the weekend, sorry, in midweek against mm -hmm. Southampton. On a couple of occasions, when, uh, occasions as well, you see, obviously, he's just lacking that experience. Mm -hmm. But that's how you get the experience. Yeah, though, that's it? what I was going to say. You have to commit to them. You have to let them develop in that team. And you have to let them make mistakes almost. I'll be learning from them. And look, if the club was in a better situation, he, we wouldn't be relying on him. He's not playing because he's ready. He's playing because we've had to turn to him. But mm. he's had some decent performances so yeah. far. And I think it'll do the lads some good to get the consistent I think the fans, experience. I think the fans are right behind him. And we'll want to see him play as well. So, you know, that might, that'll might that change, obviously, as Nathan Patterson gets fit. The manager's already real shameless. I would say that's long, a longer term than what they thought. So, Patterson will get fit. Then, you know, obviously Roman Dixon might still be involved because the manager might go, you know what? Actually, he is Patterson's backup now. Or he gets in over Patterson. Ashley Young, not really anything against Ashley Young here, but at 40 this season, he really should only be a substitute mm. now and, and to keep the, the levels going and training. He's a good utility player. He can drop into two or three positions. He shouldn't really be starting games. So, from from my perspective, Everton's right back situation right now should be between Nathan Patterson and Roman Dixon, and that's how it should be. And that youth, I think the fans will get behind that as well and see where we go from there. But obviously, there will be changes, and we'll have to sort of piece it together in that midfield too, because obviously, Idris Garner Gay is not going to be there. James Garner hasn't even trained. He's ill, so. I'd be amazed if the manager put him back in now. Because obviously, you haven't trained up to Thursday and you, you've got an illness, you haven't even been in the building. How can you be expected to go and play centre of the park in a big game? So he's got a decision to make. It's either Oral Mangala, who didn't have a great game against Southampton, but again, hasn't really trained with the first team properly yet. Got to get up to speed. Or it's Abdelai de Corey, who do you think the manager will plump for? I think or will we'll... he plump for both of them? I think we'll see Decore alongside the <laughs> Rabunum. Um, okay. I think he, he'll want to get Decore in that team. Mm -hmm. So obviously he scored in midweek and he got man of the match, obviously, as well. Although, you know, there weren't many contenders for that. Mm -hmm. He didn't have enough of the ball for anyone else to shine. But I think he'd like to get him into that team. So he obviously likes Decore. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be aware of the fact that, you know, we've not won games without Decore, mm -hmm. even though that was more down to not having someone to play that position rather than Decore's individual performance itself. Yeah. But I think he'll want him in the team and it's the only place he really can get him in the team because we'll see McNeil in the 10 again, obviously, because he's done all right there. That's if Harrison's fit, though, because I see what I look at it. If Jack Harrison... Well, I think we'll see NJ and Lindstrom on the I, wings. See, I don't. I don't think he'll play Jesper Lindstrom. I really don't. He, 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 he mentioned it again in the press conference and he almost said, it's all right playing in the cup, but the real stuff, like as if the, the cup game wasn't real. So I think I could see, you might be right, but I think he's more likely to play Dwight McNeil on the left and Jai on the right, the core of Dom and Mangala alongside um, Irabunum. But who do you think he's got more questions over? Do you think he seriously doubts Lindstrom more than he does Mangala? Yeah. Do you think? I'd, well, he's already, when we got Mangala, he said he was he's a Premier League experience. And, well, yeah, I suppose it, it ticks that box for you could him, be, you, I, I could be way off here. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if, no, you, if he you've does got it a point. that way. I just think, I don't know, I think he'll be more disappointed with Mangala's performance. He did mm. give Lindstrom mm. a little bit of praise yeah, in the press yeah, conference. Yeah. He said, yeah. oh, you know, maybe the chances, but he's he's mm. done uh, done well in moments. And I think if you get to Corey and it saves having to make a decision about mm. the number 10, and what you do yeah, there true, because yeah. the only other option would be to maybe take NJ out and have McNeil on the left but I think the fans would crucify him if he did that I mm. think there's no world in which he could justify that mm. so I think we'll see Decore in the hold of midfield position it wouldn't That's shock me if before long we see him go back into the 10 but I think while we're so short on sitting midfield options as well it, it might force us on to play Decore so that gives him an option on the bench as well if yeah, you start yeah, Decore true. you don't have the midfielder on the bench do you? Harrison Armstrong, of course, but again, he's he's a young lad developing, isn't he? And we, we shouldn't be, not saying we shouldn't be using him because he's a talented kid. We shouldn't certainly be relying on him, putting any pressure on him. You want to bring him in and integrate him slowly because that's what we want to see. It's only the fourth time 
Uh, Leicester City have failed to win any of their first four Premier League games. Drawn two, lost two. In all pre previous seasons that they've done it, they've been relegated. So that isn't boding well for them. Doesn't mean it'll end up this time like that. Everton have lost their open up four league matches in a season for only the third time in their history. 26-27 and 58-59. They're only the third Premier League side to lose their first four fixtures and concede 13 plus goals alongside Swindon Town and Southampton. That isn't great, is it? That is not great. Um, hey ho. I'm not going to go on about the 2 0 up and all that. Dominic Calderloon scored 14 um, Premier scored in 14 Premier League defeats for Everton, including his last two games, Bournemouth and Villa. That's the most games scored in and lost for the Toffees in the competition. One ahead of Duncan Ferguson, who lost 13 times when scoring for Everton. And Jamie Vardy has been involved in 12 goals in his last eight Premier League starts against teams. Starting the day, bottom of the table, he's got nine goals and three assists. And he's netted seven times in 14 appearances against the Toffees, which is why we have got him as the danger man, because he, like you said, he is full Will Young. He is evergreen, isn't he? And again, a, a player who only come into football late on, which is why maybe he's able, he's still got that desire and that fitness and the will to win, even at the age he's at. So he's done brilliantly. He's a threat. Got to be careful with him. He's a good finisher. Never gives anything up. Even lost causes. Like the goal last week, the keeper should have had it early and he didn't mm -hmm. give it up and get the little touch for the keeper can claim it and before he knows. But he's, he's quick with his feet, isn't he? And he makes the defenders think twice mm -hmm. before lunging him because he is very quick with mm -hmm. his feet. He sets himself up well and gets his mm -hmm. body in so defenders have a choice between either leaving him or fouling him. Yeah. Want to watch for sure at the weekend. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Do you fancy Everton to get off, you know, break that losing streak and get a result at the King Power Stadium? Or do you think it'll be more misery for Sean Dykes as Leicester City, you know, get their first win of the season? Or are you going to get fully on the fence and say it'll be a draw? All will be revealed at the weekend. Uh, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to become a Toffee TV Premier member, the link's in the description. QR code's on the screen now. Thanks for watching. See you later.